Really? Really? If there's, okay. Rachel's going to pass them out. Hold your hand up high so Rachel can give you an invitation. David, your sister would kill you if you can. Yeah. All right, so lock-in is in two weeks. Ladies, if you've never been to a Fuse lock-in, Brittany and the staff here does an amazing job putting lock-ins together for us. It's such, so much fun. You don't want to miss it, especially those girls that were in kids before that moved up to Fuse this year. It's your first time at a lock-in. Please come, get to know your female leaders, so that way we can fellowship. Um, relationships and friendships are going to be made that night. Changes are going to be made. It's a lot of fun. And you get to wake Miss Brittany up all through the night. It's a great time. Oh, wait. No, wait. I take that back. Ryan is going to pray over offering tonight. Give Ryan a round of applause. Ryan's a really cool dude. For those of you that don't know, he's only cool for about five minutes. Lord God, I just thank you just for bringing us all here today safe. Lord God, I just thank you for just letting us be in fellowship to you. Lord God, thank you for having us a uh, good youth pastor like Justin to bring us the word, Lord. Uh, I hope it just sinks deep into our soul, Lord God, and just uh, us be able just to take it out into the world and just use it for Jesus and bring it. What's up, Fuse? How we doing? Alright, y'all gotta give me grace today, because like I'm I'm all about Apple products, but my iPad let me down today. It deleted my notes for tonight. So there's a sore subject of Apple products right now. So hey, so check out the new Windows uh, tablet, man. It's pretty cool. That's how better I am right now. Um, so real quick, I have an announcement. Do we have any homeschoolers in the house? Easy, easy, simmer, simmer. Definitely homeschooler. Um, so, we are starting this week, we are starting a new thing for homeschool. If you know anybody in Clay County, man, we are starting homeschool chapel in here. All right, we're going to have like donuts, all of this kind of stuff. We're going to have fun, we're going to have games, and we're going to have live worship. We're going to have a little message and stuff, but it's a great time for. Um, for you that, that don't have a school that you go to, come and have a place to hang out with other um, people your age and uh, and have a, a good time. Cool? So that starts this Tuesday, Tuesday at 10 a.m. All right? Homeschoolers, 10 a.m. Bring some friends. I know that a lot of you never, we're already expecting probably about 40 on the first week. So that's really huge, man. It's, it's taken off pretty big. Um, so 10 o'clock, man, we're going to be here. It's only for an hour. Uh, so 10 to 11. So tell your parents and, and whoever else you may know to come check out Chapel. All right, cool? Cool. cool. All right, we're just going to go in tonight. So uh, who, who remembers what I talked about last week? <laughs> well, I did a really good job last week of preaching. I preached on... Oh, okay. oh, Jesus! I feel like the pain down the way, the fear point. So I preached about. Jesus. All right. So we, we talk, we're in the series called Fuse as Family, and we're talking about our core values of Fuse. And last last week we talked about Jesus. He's our number one um, core value. He's the one that we center this this ministry around. Um, tonight we're going to talk about grace. How many of you know grace? Now your great grandmother Grace. <laughs> I wanted to show a video of this, this um, prayer, and it was National Lampoon Christmas Vacation. And the guy's like... It was on last night. It was on last night? Yeah, last night. That's awesome. And this one partner sitting at the dinner table, and he's yelling at this lady, I want you to say Grace, and she's like... What? Grace? She died 30 years ago. Right. No, say the blessing. And so, it was a really funny part. And then she says the flag. This is awesome. So, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about grace tonight. Um, I think this is an area, man, that we all, we, we kind of misunderstand sometimes or we take for granted. Uh, we really don't apply it to our lives. We expect grace. We expect, expect it from other people. But yet we have a, an issue or trouble giving it out. So, we're going to, uh, I'm going to be talking to you. This is going to be kind of rough because I'm using this little bitty Apple product. All right. And, we're, and I'm talking to you about the story of the prodigal son. It's in Luke 15, chapter 11. Um, and you see in the story, um, 
the, there's one son comes to his dad and is like, hey, I'm done. I'm out. I want all my inheritance. I want everything you have for me. And um, woo -woo, I'm out. All right? And he goes and he leaves. And he spends all his money, gives, does all this, and says that he spent all his money on wild living. All right? So partying, doing all the stupid, um, whatever. Probably bought a car or a chariot that had gold. I'm about to say Dayton's on it. Y'all don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so, you know, he went out and bought his sweet charity. You know, it had probably two horsepower. Um, <laughs> huge. Like it. Uh, so, you know, so he squandered all his money and, and had friends, man, that he thought they were the best friends in the world. And as soon as money ran out, they were, they were out. His charity got repoed <laughs> by Little Link Tony. <laughs> Some of y'all watch that. That may be the dumbest show I've ever seen in my life. You get the lick. Alright? Oh, that's stupid. Um, but so, so he lost everything he has, and it's talked about in the story. It's Jesus telling the parable. He's, he says, man, there's just one part where he loses everything, and he finds himself um, trying to find a way to make a living. And so he's working for this guy, and he, and he starts eating for the pig slop. So he gets a job feeding pigs. And then all of a sudden, it gets so bad, he's looking at this, this slop. All right, if you've never been around pigs, how many of you have ever been around pigs? Yes. All right, it is horrible. All right? Like, I mean, it's scrap food. It's old rotten vegetables. It's, it's whatever you have left. We call a gumbo. And you put it in this, this mud. I mean, they don't put it in a trough or anything like that. It's just in the mud, the poop, the pee. Okay, it's all there. And so the pigs, that's why, man, people like going to be pigs. All right, so he's down there, and at the point you know it's gotten bad, and you're like, man, that kind of looks good. And he starts eating it. All right, and so it's at the point where he's lost everything, and he starts eating the slop that the, he's feeding the pigs. And I love the scripture, man, it tells us, being un, that I don't have my notes, and it's taking me forever with the little... Phone. But it talks about, it says that he came to his senses. So he's in this moment, and he's at the bottom of his, his, his bucket, or whatever you want to say, the worst part of his life. He's hit rock bottom, and he comes to this, this, his senses, and he says, wait, I'm, I'm going to go back home. I'm going to ask my, my father to forgive me. And I'll say, Dad, I'll, I'll be one of your servants. Just let me back home. And so he starts, he starts talking. He's, he's, he's like, man, i, I got to do something different, man. Even the servants have it better at my father's house than I do now. And so he goes back, and, and I love that he goes. And, he, and the whole way there, you know, he's thinking, you know, this is a journey home. He's walking home. And the whole time he's walking, all he is thinking about is how to say I'm sorry. How I many of you have ever been in that moment where you know you did something wrong and you know that you've got to go ask them sorry, but that whole time leading up to it, all you can think about, every thought in your mind is how I'm going to say I'm sorry and how that person is going to react. Come on, seriously. How many of you have done something to somebody and you've been afraid of the reaction that may come when you have to say I'm sorry? That's a lot of times we don't say I'm sorry because we're afraid of the reaction from that person. Me, I was worried about being punched in the face. <laughs> I go with three brothers. You say I'm sorry to them, usually still end up in a fight. So, so he's going, he's, he's making this trip, and he's just like, man, what if my dad just laughs at me? I mean, I left in a hurry. I kind of just like, dad, give me all my money. I'm out of here. I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. And, and, and the whole time he's like, man, what if, he, what if he doesn't take me back? Well, I'll just, I'll be a servant, man. I'll, I'll just take the bottom job. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll hit rock bottom even more at my father's house because it's better than eating pig slime. And so he, as he's coming, I love the story because it says when he was coming, his father saw him from a distance. And his father runs to him. And in that moment, if you're if that's my dad, all right, and I'm walking and I see it, and my dad running towards me, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm cold, dude. <laughs> my dad's like, hey, we're going to kiss you and stuff like that. My dad's going to punch me in the throat. 
And so, and so he sees his, his dad running from afar off, and he's running, all right? And he's got to be like old man running. Like, I mean, this guy is older. He's in a dress, and he's trying to pick up his dress. He's wearing a king on. He's in sandals. Like, it is, there is no graceful. Right, it's not like that. I mean, there's dress flying where I'm probably seeing up his dress, his gown, flip flop to break in. I mean, it's, it's, he's old. He can't run fast. He's about to fall on face plant. Like, you're like, just, just don't run. Just, I'll come to you. Don't run. I'll come to you. You know? And so this old man is running to his son. And it says that he runs up and he grabs his son. And he started his son, but as soon as his dad's like kissing on him, my dad would never have me like, Dad, stop. You, you weird me out. <laughs> you just ran like 20 yards. Stop. Um, so he, he, he grabs his son and, and you know, I just hold him. His son's like, Father, look, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. Um, look, 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 just let me be a servant in your house and, and I'll do whatever. And look, I'm sorry. And his father was like, nonsense, nonsense. And so his father's taking a ring off. And he's putting a ring on his finger. And he's like, no, my son is lost now. He's found. He comes back home. He's like, let's do a party. And we're like, what? Are you kidding me? And that's the reaction to the older son. See, the father comes back and he says, no, well, come back, come back, come back. And he's throwing this party. He kills a spotted calf, put clothes and shoes on his feet. And the brother has an issue with it. The older brother stands back and he's like, you're not even going to talk to him. And he wronged our family. He did this. He hurt us. He put us through misery. Every night my dad stood at the gate and watched for him. No, I'm not welcoming him back. I don't want nothing to do with him. So I'm a brother. And that's what I'm going to talk to you tonight about is, is that brother. How many of us are that brother or that, that friend that, man, we, we, don't, we don't open up. We don't allow people to, to re-enter our family because of something they've done. 